page four in Dreams. This is a piece from the movie Lord of the Rings. Four, four time, no sharps or flats in the key signature. We're using all the white keys. Well, not all the white keys, but only white keys, except we have some flats in here, some E flats, so we gotta use at least one white, black key. Let's take it carefully and make sure we got the rhythm and the notes and all that. In the left hand, you're starting fifth finger here. That puts your hand in this position. The right hand, when it comes in, is here, and that's in this. So we're in this position. Now we're coming in on beat four. So the first major only has one count in it, four and. Yeah. So there should be another major somewhere with three counts in it because it, all together it's got to be four counts. If you look at the music, there isn't. In my opinion, that's an error. That last measure at the bottom of page five it should not be a whole note. It should be a dotted half note. Doesn't affect how we play it. We're going to still come in on beat four. So here, just technically it's not correct. Four and, four and, one, two. One and, you remember a dotted half note is the same as three quarter notes. So if you know what a quarter note gets, this gets three of those. In this case, it gets three counts. One, two, and three, and. One and two and three, and. And you're basically playing it all here. Now, rem the numbers at the beginning of the lines in the little boxes above the staff, those are measure numbers. So I can refer to measure numbers. And it's like if I want to say, okay, take a look at measure 10. Well, you got to figure out where 10 is. You can go down to measure 7 and count across 10, 7, 8, 9, 10. Or you can go to measure 11 and say, well, 10's right in front of it, so you go back one measure. That's what I usually do. So really, it's the last measure on page, what, four is here. Two notes, a D and a, a here. So start one measure before that. On measure nine, you're here. One and two and three and. Just hold them both down. Just two notes instead of one, big deal. And you get that over on page five, two in a few places. Let's go to measure 16. You're here. One and two and three, it's tied. And then on the end of three is the F. One and two and three and four. One and two and. We're gonna use the same finger for the E flat as for the E. Just come down here. One and two and here. And do you understand dotted? I don't know how, how I don't know how much you understand here. It's a, it's a dotted quarter note. It's the same as three eighth notes. So a dotted note is the same as three of whatever the next under note is. And so here it's going to get one count for the quarter note, a half a count for the dot because the dot gets half the value of the note, and that would be a half a count. So then the eighth notes on after that. So it's one and two and three and four and. So the quarter note comes on B3, the dot comes on B4, and then on the end of four is the other eighth note, oh, E. And of course that flat now is good for the rest of the measure, but only that measure. So both of those E's are flatted. So again, measure 17. One and two and three and four. Four notes down together. Just lower the whole hand down together. Try and get them all down at the same time. I don't, but maybe you can. And then you do it again. And connect that. That's sort of the notes and the fingering. Then go through it a few times. However many times it takes, I don't care. And get rid of any hesitations you've got. So the beat is a steady beat. Doesn't matter how fast you go, but it has to be a steady beat. Once you can do that, then we add the articulation. And that's here, and it would be the phrasing. Going to lift up between the phrases, just a little lift up. It's like taking a breath. So you're cutting the last note of a phrase a little bit short, so you can lift up. It's here. So at the beginning, connect all these together. Then lift up. It's like you're taking a breath. Connect all this.
this and then lift up but just lift up between the phrases it makes it so much more musical when you can do that when you get over to what around measure 12 you ending a phrase lift up to lift up lift up again connect all this together now I disagree with this what they're doing here between a measure 16 they're ending a phrase no, it's not ending a phrase there. Connect it to measure 17. Pretend that curved line goes all the way across here. So in the measure 17. And then between measure 18 and 19, you can pretend that's a phrase. That's the difference. So, so you can then lift up. It's an afterthought. It's like an afterthought. The song ended at measure 16 on Gim the half note. That's the end of the song. The rest of this, that's a, just an afterthought. It's like a coda. It's just a tag on the end of the piece. So you can connect it all pretty much except I think I would lift up after the whole note on measure 18. I'd lift up both hands like taking a breath. Yeah, It's not in the music but if I were your teacher I'd draw slur lines doing what I just described I'm doing. Dynamics Moderate, whatever you think MP mezzo piano or moderately soft is, it's not soft, it's just sort of soft. And you're staying there. Now when you get down to the bottom of the page, the last two, it comes up a little bit to moderately loud. Whatever you think moderately loud is, and then Measure 12 at the end, back to moderately soft. Stay moderately soft. And then when you get to measure 15, start as soft and then moderately loud and then loud. So you get each note is a little louder. Loud, not really loud, just loud. And stay there. When you have accents on measure 17, that's going to make those notes sort of, sort of, a little louder. soft no accents of course just it's like an echo the last two measures echo the two measures in front so you're loud on measure 17 and then saw echo it don't slow down just echo it yeah that's sort of the dynamics get into the music and feel it and feel the dynamics that's where it is right now it's very mechanical and artificial we're just kind of forcing it so you want to get into the music and let it flow yeah speed well it's slow you i'm sure you heard recordings of this to play with you slowly just a little slower than what I just did I'm not going to do any dynamics we're just going to play the notes and the rhythms you should be playing the same note I'm playing at the same time I'm playing it that's all we're after here you can do the dynamics and all that on your own I will lift up between the phrases though so I'm going to give us three counts because we come in on beat four one ready and go and Four. One and two and three 
and. For this at the bottom of the page I'd like to play that and you play what we just played I'm gonna speed it up a little bit a little closer to how fast it goes I'll give us three counts now the duet doesn't have anything on your pickup you're by yourself so I'm gonna play those notes with you and then I'm gonna do the duet part now I have a problem with this duet part is it's got a lot of half notes in it now we need to stay together we need the beat so I'm gonna play quarter notes in the left hand to keep the beat I'll make something up but It'd be easier if we could be together and I could hear you, then I could follow you, but I can't do that here. I just have to keep a steady beat and hope you stay with me. I'm going to go about a one, two, and three, and. It's about that fast, so make sure you can play that fast with no hesitations or this won't work. Now for this duet to work, I need you to go up an octave on the keyboard. Because the piano is using these notes in here, I need you to go up. So what we're going to do is we're just going to pretend middle C it goes up one octave to this C. We're going to pretend this is middle C. So instead of here, you're up here and play it up here. All up here. One, ready, and go, and. 